Okay, so Thunderfoot just uploaded a video, uh, I don't know if it was earlier today or it might have been yesterday, um, titled, um, Why Feminists, Feminists in quotation marks, are poisoning atheism. And everyone's kind of buzzing about it, and I've seen it, and I'm really, I'm not quite sure what I think about it, to be honest, uh, because I think that there is sort of a unique experience, unique yet universal experience that I'm going through right now, which is uh, that feeling you get when you watch two people or two groups, or in this case, a person and a group, uh, going at it, and you don't like either of them. Um, because I'm, I'm no big fan of Thunderfoot. I mean, I, I he's made some decent videos in the past, but I, th I think that he's a guy who primarily gets his reputation for being um, smart uh, by the fact that his primary targets have been easy ones. And uh, I'm really no big fan of Rebecca Watson and PZ Myers and the whole sort of atheism plus slash free thought blogs slash uh, the skeptic movement slash whatever the hell they're calling themselves this week. Um, so I find myself agreeing with a lot of the points that Thunderfoot makes, at least as far as why some of these individuals are uh, saying things which are stupid and wrong and don't really make a lot of sense and are at the very least not helpful. But I, I kind of disagree. I, one area I disagree is where he goes with it. But uh, the first one that I want to address is that I kind of I question his methodology a little bit, and I question the ways in which I think that he's arrived at some of his conclusions because I think that they show um, some suspect reasoning that I don't think he would use if he wasn't kind of speaking out of. Uh, preconceived conclusions. And I'll give you an example. Um, he shows a clip of Rebecca Watson, who again, I, I can't stand, um, saying uh, that uh, it's possible that some women at these conferences have been victims of discrimination uh, and not known it. And he kind of points to that like, oh, well, you know, how can she say that they've been victims of discrimination and not known it? Isn't that kind of like telling somebody how they feel? Well, the problem is no, because discrimination isn't a matter of how you feel, it's a matter of how you're treated and if that treatment is equal. I mean, many groups throughout history have known, have been discriminated against, have been oppressed, and particular individuals within that group have either not known it or been completely okay with it. I mean, um, you know, if you go back to like the nineteen the, the 1930s, uh, a lot of women actually felt that a woman's place really was in the home. A lot of uh, a lot of women felt that you know it was their duty to be the homemaker and and all that bullshit. Uh, and I mean, even if you go back, I'll look at a more extreme example. Um, f shortly after the Civil War, there were slaves, and this wasn't a significant percentage, who had recently been freed but wanted to go back. Um, once again, not a significant percentage of them. But uh, enough individuals, at the very least, that a lot of white supremacist groups have sort of tried to take advantage of uh, a couple of the sort of wayward quotes. Now, again, I'm not trying to say that the experiences of these women at these conferences compare to either of those historical examples I just pointed out. In fact, I don't actually know what their experiences were. I wasn't there. Um, but what I am trying to say is that um, dis discerning whether somebody has been discriminated against and doesn't know it is not an a priori thing. You would have to go to the evidence. You would have to go to what had happened and then determine if discrimination was present there. You can't just say, well, they don't think they were, therefore they weren't. And part of me would have to kind of think that uh, this is not a mistake Thunderfoot would make otherwise. And I'll give you another example. Apparently there was some sort of a controversy surrounding fake jewelry. Now, I don't know what it was, but having watched the video in which Thunderfoot addresses and mocks it, I still don't know what it was. Um, I... I don't know what fake jewelry means, but apparently, I mean, he showed a clip, he, he played like a, a five second clip of a woman talking about, you know, we need a policy that it's not okay to make fake jewelry, and then she keeps, she, she goes on about other stuff, and, um... I, I, I find it very hard to believe that a group of people would just sit down and collectively decide that, uh, once again, I don't really know what fake jewelry means. The only thing that I can think of is knockoff jewelry. Um, and like, I, like, I have a very hard time imagining that a group of people sat around and just collectively decided that knockoff jewelry was not only horrible, but somehow an issue of gender discrimination. When, uh, th that's complete non sequitur. Uh, now, that's the impression that I got from watching Thunderfoot's video, though, is that these people just kind of all collectively sat around and decided that, uh, you know, women were being discriminated against because somebody was making fake jewelry. Now, I can't think of anything 
pertaining to fake jewelry that actually would be some sort of a horrible issue of gender discrimination, so I'm kind of forced to believe that whatever it was, it probably was stupid. But I really kind of highly doubt that it was as stupid as Thunderfoot was trying to make it out to be in the video. And right up front, I'm also going to say that I disagree with his assessment that there does not, that there should not be a policy against sexual harassment at these conferences. Um, I, I, again, I don't know how frequent it is, um, but I don't think that it needs to necessarily be an issue of frequency. I don't think that something actually, I think this might actually be one of those cases where it doesn't need to have happened to be addressed. I mean, I've been a member of several groups um, throughout my life, and I am a member of several groups even now that have, uh, that have utilized uh, quote-unquote safe space policies, and uh, they almost never come up, but when they do, you're glad that you have them. Uh, now, it would, this would be a case where I think that if I was to actually, just because I agree with a lot of people who say that there should be uh, a sexual harassment policy doesn't mean that I would necessarily agree with them on what that should constitute. I mean, I would say that, for example, the guy who yelled out, uh, show us your tits at that one woman who was speaking, I think that there should be a policy in place at a lot of these conferences to maybe put a foot up his ass of some kind, but at the same time, you know, say a guy in an elevator, uh, to, to use the more than infamous phrase by now, would probably not constitute a violation of a sexual harassment policy. It would probably just be a, an awkward guy uh, crashing and burning, uh, trying to ask a woman out, and let's just leave it at that. Uh, but I think that my main issue with the, with this video is the, the fact that I'm sensing a theme of recursion here when he says poisoning atheism. And what I mean is this. A group of people have decided that sexual harassment at atheist conferences is ruining atheism. Thunderfoot has now come along and said that a group of people who have decided that sexual harassment at atheist conferences is ruining atheism are ruining atheism. Now, how long is it going to be before somebody comes along and says this guy who is suggesting that these people who are suggesting that sexual harassment at atheist conferences is ruining atheism are ruining atheism is ruining atheism? I mean, in a lot of ways, Thunderfoot is, is almost becoming the people he's criticizing by turning this into this movement of, like, everything is ruined forever! Like, if you look, for example, the, the woman who apparently cried at a t-shirt one woman, and you know, people freak out all the time. I mean, I have a friend of mine once saw a woman freak out in a store, a grown woman freak out in a grocery store because her mother wouldn't buy her fish. You know, I almost flipped off a snowplow driver the other day because they were doing their fucking job. I mean, people freak out all the time, and one would think that one person freaking out over one thing would not be considered symptomatic of anything, but it's been elevated by Thunderfoot into this big symptomatic allegorical issue in almost the exact same way that Rebecca Watson has managed to turn a guy in an elevator into the patriarchy. Like, yes, I would agree, Rebecca Watson and PZ Myers and Freethought blogs are not helpful. In fact, I think that they've, they're approaching a point that is fucking dumb on an astonishing level. But a deeply permeating, horrible problem that does not make. I mean, this is still a tiny little thing in two different ways. And the first way is the fact that outside of these conferences and within the scope of atheism itself, uh, you know, people with no religious affiliation are the third largest group in the world in terms of religious affiliation. And I mean, atheism is a large part of that. And, you know, outside of these conferences and outside of a couple blogs and a couple websites and a couple channels on YouTube, no one gives a fuck. Like, if I walk up to any one of my atheist friends, of whom there are obviously many who are not on the internet, and I say, so what do you think about Atheism Plus? What do you think about Rebecca Watson, Elevator Gate, uh, the Skeptic Movement? What do you think about um, the concept of sexual harassment policy? The the, they, they, they look at me and they say, I'm, I'm not really sure what the hell you're talking about. I was actually talking to a friend of mine the other day who is an atheist, who is a feminist, who is an activist in so many circles, and those are two of them. Um, and I, I started to make a joke about Rebecca Watson, and she had no idea who I was talking about. And these are not ill-informed people. These are friends of mine who have read books on atheism, who have attended, you know, philosophical debates, um, who... Even, some of them are even, you know, known on the YouTube circuit. They know people, they know people like Pat Condell and The Amazing Atheist and Thunderfoot. But in the general scope of atheism, if you're going to say that something is poisoning atheism, it might help if it actually seemed to be permeating atheism itself. And the second thing is, even within the scope of these conferences and the YouTube atheist community and everything like that, nobody gives a fuck. Like, Atheism Plus. This thing that's allegedly poisoning atheism, basically, because it's all it's all in a continuum, right? Like atheism plus is free thought blogs is th these are the people Thunderfoot's addressing. Atheism plus 
how many videos were made mocking it? How many, um, how many blogs were made on the subject that were then bombarded with negative comments? I mean, even Rebecca Watson, the video in which she talks about Elevator Gate, look at the thumbs up to thumbs down ratio, and this is on her own channel. I mean, I made a video on Elevator Gate where I basically called Rebecca Watson a fucking loon. I've gotten, I think, like something like 300 views. I've gotten two thumbs downs. One negative comment on the whole thing. Well, actually, it was several, but it was a conversation I was having with this one. I'm going to do a video on that later on, too. I've already shot it. I just have to edit it. Like, this group of people who are being nigh universally mocked, universally criticized, universally laughed at, to suggest that they are capable of, let alone actively accomplishing, the feat of poisoning atheism is frankly ridiculous. And in much the same way that these people suggesting that sexual harassment at conferences has become this big problem has kind of created this air of tension um, within the movement and within, uh, I would assume, at these conferences. Um, in much the same way that that has happened, I think that saying that feminists, with or without quotation marks, are poisoning atheism is just going to accomplish the same thing. I mean, I don't really agree with the assessment that Thunderfoot is um, trying to paint all feminists with the same brush, but I think that unfortunately he's going to end up having that effect. I think that this is going to lead to a position where feminists um, who attend these conferences who might not have anything in common with Rebecca Watson and PZ Myers and Free Thought Blogs other than the fact that they call themselves feminists. I mean, in some cases, feminists, you know, I know several feminists on YouTube who have actually uh, spoken out quite harshly against people like Rebecca Watson and people like PZ Myers. Uh, and those are the only two names I know. I'm very sorry about that. You know, I feel like people like them are going to find themselves alienated at these conferences and alienated. It's just, it's going to create more of an issue where you're not going to want to, people are just, people are just going to try to I either turn this into a big melodramatic thing or just not talk about it like it's this giant elephant in the room because they're afraid of, you know, they're afraid of, of being identified as being uh, part of some kind of a faction that is somehow opposed to all of these other factions uh, and maybe possibly in league with other factions but not other factions and there's too many fucking factions! And unfortunately, when you throw around words like poisoning atheism, you know, even though you might be right to criticize the individuals that you're actually criticizing, it's not helpful in the long run to, uh, to, to create this sort of air of fear where everyone is afraid that very soon everything's just going to blow the fuck up. Atheism is doing just fine. The numbers are still growing. The numbers of percentage of the population is still growing. What is in danger of blowing the fuck up is these conferences because pretty damn soon you're going to have nobody wanting to show up because they're not going to want to deal with the bickering, both coming from the skeptic movement and coming from the backlash that has long since outgrew its necessitation.